to my friend's neighborhood. I'm trying to find where to park. Which is a, always a challenge in Athens, so turn left, destination is on the right. And there's something up with a car, because it doesn't idle anymore. Well, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm not really sure why. My fuel consumption seems to have gone up significantly as well. Looks like I got... Uh, I got work to do tomorrow. What's up, Bobby? Good afternoon, everyone. Brand new day. It's already a glorious sunny afternoon. Slightly windy. Topped up the car to see how much fuel I used um, while driving from the summer house to Athens, and actually my consumption was very decent. I used up about 16 liters of fuel for 270 kilometers, which comes down to about six liters per 100 kilometer, which is very decent for now at least, because I do intend on improving the car's fuel consumption even further. What I thought was wrong with uh, how much fuel the car was actually consuming had to do with, uh, with my fuel gauge, and it was just a bad connection of the tank, so I just fiddled about with it, and it seems to be back to normal, so everything's fine. The idling issue comes and goes, it's not that much of a hassle or a problem for the time being, it seems like the car is losing its ability to idle properly when I'm stuck in traffic and the engine gets too hot. Um, but it's not too troublesome right now. I don't really feel like getting my hands dirty yet. So I'll just let it be. So, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary won't come to me. I will actually have to get my hands dirty and sort out the problem. Okay, now there's quite a few reasons why Bob might not be idling as well as I would like him to. So I'm going to be running a series of uh, tests or checks on the engine um, to see if I can actually locate the actual culprit of the idling issue. Now, the facts that I have for the problem with the car is, first of all, it loses its ability to idle when the engine gets way too hot and usually does so when I'm stuck in traffic. So heat definitely has something to do with it and I'll have to kind of work my way around that. Now the first test I actually did was to disconnect my auxiliary electric fan uh, just in case that the fan was drawing so much power from the engine that at idle it would actually reduce the advance curve of the car and kill the engine. But that was not the case. I kept on having the problem whether the fan was on and off so that's definitely not the reason. Second check, which is going to be the one that's going to take me um, uh, the most of the time for today, is to check for air leaks. And that can be quite a bugger, to be very honest with you. I have already checked my vacuum, my advanced uh, vacuum uh, pipe for leaks, and that seems to be fine. So there's no leak either on the pipe or on the linkage on the carburetor or the linkage on uh, the vacuum pump itself. And the diaphragm seems to be working just fine. So what I will be doing is I will turn the engine on, bring it up to normal working temperature, let it idle, and then I will start spraying right where the, the carburetor meets the manifold and where the manifold meets the cylinder head and see if I can spot a leak. So let's see how that goes.
Okay, now, though I was not expecting to be having any other kind of air leakage issues on my car, turn, turned out that I actually needed a gasket to be replaced here. The initial purpose of me discussing air leaks was a little patent, so to call, that I've come up with for my HS4 carburetor that has been working like a jolly for the past few months and has taken me through quite a few thousand of kilometers without the slightest issue. Now, one of the biggest, probably the biggest problem when it comes to air leaks on an SU HS4 carburetor is air leaks on the shaft of the butterfly valve. It's normal wear and tear as time and kilometers go by and there's a gap that develops in between the shaft and the body of the carburetor which allows air to be sucked in as the engine creates vacuum. Now there is, a, there is a repair kit that you can actually buy which includes a brand new um, shaft and it includes a bushing that you can actually install by drilling out your carburetor body properly in a dimension required to accommodate the bushing. Um, the best methodology for doing that that I uh, was able to find on the net, it's actually in YouTube and I found that on a channel by a guy called uh, Joe Curto and he is an immense wealth of knowledge and an absolute joy to listen to talking about SU carbs uh, for hours and hours and hours on end. So if you're into mini and you're doing your own DIY carb jobs, whatever, and you need help and advice and tips and ideas on how to best set, fix, repair and adjust SU carburetors, um, Joe is an actual magician when it comes to them. I really enjoy him sharing all his, you know, wealth and knowledge on, on them and I've actually included a, a link of his SU carb video for you to watch if you're interested. Now getting back to business, when I procured mine, uh, my repair kit from, uh, from a supplier, unfortunately the quality, of it, the quality of it was so bad that after having installed a brand new shaft with a brand new bushing properly drilled um, in the carburetor body, the air leak was as bad as if I had done nothing with it. So I threw away that carburetor body because it was junk, not really worth my time anymore. And I got my spare carb, which is this one, and I tried to work my way around a solution in managing the air leaks that go through here. And after a bit of thinking and a couple of coffees and a few ciggies, what I came up with was a valve stem seal. Turns out that you can actually squeeze a standard mini valve stem seal onto the shaft of the carburetor and it will do a great job at sealing off any air trying to leak into the body. Now, this is just to stop air leaking through. If you have such a badly worn shaft uh, on your carburetor that it actually even gets stuck, this, this isn't really going to solve the problem. But for the initial stages of a worn shaft, this is perfect, actually. I have been actually testing this on the road for quite a few thousand kilometers. It's at least 10K I clocked, and it hasn't created a single issue. Like, I never had an air leak through here, and you can actually see earlier on in the video when I was spraying for leaks, checking for leaks, nothing happened when I sprayed on this, uh, on this part of the shaft. So, how does the installation work? Well... There's a couple of tricks. First of all, you got to shorten it a bit. And what I do is I use uh, an 8 millimeter socket and I'll just place the seal in and I'll just use a blade to cut off the excess height because the actual required one I want is roughly about, roughly, and it's okay to be a millimeter off or something. I need about five, six, seven and a half mil, while the standard one is about, about 11, right? So you chop off about four mil of a standard valve seal, and then how it works is you got to remove the spring from the seal with a bit of care and attention. There you go. Make sure you don't lose that. And then you got to flip the seal over, just like that. And now you can actually push the seal onto the shaft. Carefully push it in, all the way. 
just like I show you here. And the moment it touches the body, the body of the carburetor, you just give it another push and there you go. It just folds around the body of the carburetor and that offers a nearly almost perfect seal. Then you install the spring in place, which can be a bit of a pain to get to. Come on, babe. We can do this. We've done this before. There you go. There you go. And that will actually keep the air from leaking through your shaft into your carburetor and messing up your fuel mixture, your emissions and your um, idling and quality of riding. And it actually makes for a very, very good stiff feel on the operation of the, of the butterfly valve. So this is one side of the HS4. For the other side, you don't actually need to cut anything. You still flip the, the seal over, like inside out, push it over, it will nicely fold around the body of the carburetor, install the spring and, and the rest of the assembly here. The only detail that one needs to be aware of is because um, the valve seal was designed to operate in an environment where it's basically immersed in oil. Uh, you can actually oil it up or I prefer grease. I just use a small brush and I grease that up and it, um, it maintains uh, the seal longer. Uh, my experience with that is that this solution will definitely give you at least 10,000 kilometers before you actually need to replace that. And it has been serving me, serving me quite nicely um, for quite a few miles now and I'm quite happy with the solution.